All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakhakwadash, the honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to you, sincere Akim out there pushing the truth across the four corners of the earth. And I wanted to uh, go over a particular topic. Um, I saw a video that someone made, and um, rather than, uh, you know, doing a lot of, you know, researching the topic, you know, this person chose to bring it out as if there was some sort of mistake in the scriptures. Uh, and I noticed this uh, with a lot of men who are not grounded, um, you know, when it comes to chapters like Luke and Mark, I've heard, you know, people scoff, you know, Luke, Mark, who is that? You know, when you have to look him up, you know, Luke being a physician, right, and, um, later meeting Paul, you know, so maybe he was uh, one of the disciples who was not mentioned earlier, or maybe he received a a uh, testimony of the things that happened. And then Mark, a.k.a. John Marcus, um, being the understudy to Peter, let me go to it, and let me just go to it, all right, because you cannot, you cannot take away from any of the gospel. Uh, we believe that you know, the King James Version, this is the purest form of the gospel. Uh, you cannot take away any of the books. Every book that's written is written on purpose. Right? The Lord said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. And that's the entire book. Right? And for you to, the scriptures talk about that, man. For you to take away or add to the scriptures, that's wicked. And that'll get you, you know, that'll take you away from being numbered amongst the elect. And that's why it's so important to research things. Uh, cause let me go to where it mentions Luke. Um, and it tells you Colossians 4 and 4. Luke, the beloved physician in Demos, greet you. All right, so again, you know, it doesn't elaborate on the full background of Luke. Right, but Luke was there. And then um, it's another one. You know, 2 Timothy 4 and 11, it says, Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with me, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. All right, 2 Timothy 4 and 11. And I believe those are actually uh, Latin names. Luke. Let me see. Yeah, Luke. Luke is light giving. Okay. Latin names. And then you look up Mark. It's going to tell you uh, Marcus was his Latin surname. His Jewish name was John, by right? cousin of Barnabas and a companion of Paul on some of his missionary journeys. All right, so how long these men were around? Because, uh, you know, Paul came shortly after, um, uh, you know, the apostles were sent forth. Paul, you know, Paul was sent forth. All right, and then it tells you... Um, yeah, first Peter five and thirteen. Wait a minute, I want the other one first. Well yeah, the church that is at Babylon elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. <laughs> All right, and uh, Mark was not I don't he he wasn't the literal son of Peter, as far as I know. But uh, you know what I'm saying, it, scripture tell you treat an older man as a father. Treat the elder as a father, you know, and then a man of your age, you know, as a brother. All right, then it tells you uh, Colossians 4 and 10. It gives some of, you know, some background on Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, salute of you. And Marcus, sister's, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments. If ye come unto you, receive him. All right, and the thing is, uh, I looked that up too, sister son, to see, like, okay, this is Barnabas' his nephew. Barnabas, we know, was a companion to Paul. Um, and the word there, well, let me just go to it. All right, because some of these things, it doesn't, you know what I'm saying, they're not, when you get into Latin, it starts to get a little um, unspecific. All right, it says a, it says a cousin. Um, a kin, properly a kin, it is. So it says cousin, but when you look it up, you know, it says this word might be 
you know, relative as well. And we know that um, everything has always been all in the family. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these, we were all, all from, you know, the same nation. And then back then, we know that a lot of them could actually take their lineage back to who they were. So you had a lot of people who were cousins or second cousins or third cousins or whatever who knew that. All right. But, you know, whoever's cousin he was, you know, Luke or Mark, is not important. But the testimonies that they gave was. And you not cannot discount anything that they say. Now, that being said, the subject is Luke 3. Okay, let's go to it. Because it lists the lineage of uh, Yahweh Shai. Uh, Luke 3 and... Let's go to 23. Yahweh Shai himself be, began to be about 30 years of age. Being as was supposed it, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. And this particular person brought that out. And then they brought out the account in uh, Matthew. Matthew 1. And uh, Matthew 1 and 16. It says, And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahweh Shai, who was called Hamashiach. Okay, so it tells you, that Jacob uh, was also a father of Joseph. And so the thing is, this person was trying to say, well, see, those two, uh, uh, there's a mistake right there. Look, man, the Lord is not the author of confusion. All right, there's a reason for that. Now, how can a man have two fathers? Well, it's simple. One, one father is of a... Uh, uh, his, his father, his paternal line, and then the other father is of his maternal line. Okay? He has a, you have his father, then you have what you know what they call the father-in-law. Right? His mother, his uh his wife's father. That's also his father too. Okay, that's why people uh you know when they married, that's what it was. It was a, it was a fusion of the family. Now which one is which? Well, when you evaluate, going back to Luke 1, excuse me, Luke 3, it's like you, and you actually read through it, because it doesn't seem like this person just read through it, it seemed like he kind of skimmed through and, um, you know, wanted to jump to, you know, the, 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 the controversy, but you actually have to read through this. Right? And then when you trace it back up, uh, the two accounts are the same until you get to uh, the son of David. Okay, Luke 3 and 31. Jump it down. It says, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David. So out of the line, line of David, this particular account is, uh, goes through Nathan. Now, we know the Lord, he, he comes from the kings of Israel. So you might say, well, wait a minute. Shouldn't it be through the line of Solomon? Right? We know that Yahweh Shai is Solomon in the reincarnation. Right? And then when you go back to Matthew 1, and you go back through the lineage, Matthew 1 and 6, and Jesse begat David, because Yahweh Shai is the root of Jesse. And Jesse begat David the king. And David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. All right, we know that's uh, Bathsheba. And Solomon begat Rehoboam. So this gives, uh, like I said, these, all, these names are all the same, basically. Uh, spelling might be slightly different because of uh, the Latin that it was translated to. Okay, then translated to English until it gets to uh, Solomon, David the king. So these, this is the this particular account goes into Solomon, and these are all the kings of Israel. And Solomon begat Rehoboam, you know, aka the kings of Judah. Right? And Solomon begat Rehoboam, and Rehoboam begat Abiah, uh, which I believe is Abijah. Abijah begat Asa, Asa Jehoshaphat, and then it goes around. Joram, and I, and I think it, I believe it skips um, 
for, I forget which king that it skips. I think it's Joachim. I think it skips Joachim. All right, but the point being, these two lineages are different because this one in Matthew 1 is of his father. And then this one, which it actually does mention, it mentioned a woman in there. Sometimes the accounts actually mention women. Yeah, women get mentioned in. Now, of course, this is about being of the seed of men. But some of these accounts do um, include women. And I wanted to get this. Uh, Romans 1 and 3, concerning his son, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. There you go. So there's a precept. He was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. All right. Now, um, there's a lot, you know, that goes into it, but that's really a subject for another lesson. You know, which we've been over that topic a thousand times, man. Emmanuel, he should be born of a virgin. Okay, you have to, and yes, you have to go into the Hebrew in order to be able to decipher uh, what that word virgin means. Also in the scriptures, you do have certain clerical errors where uh, certain things, you know, it could be um, the wrong Hebrew, okay, or it could be a word was misinterpreted, you know, like when it says a poor not an Edomite, we know that goes into a poor not a Syrian. All right, so you do have uh, clerical errors in the scriptures, all right, but the scriptures do not contradict themselves at any point. And I'm, I'm surprised that this person who was teaching, you know, because they teach the Bible, you know, they'll go up and down, do all the lessons on women. But when it comes to some of these things, which are more technical, where you have to do more research and, uh, you know, be in the spirit, I notice a lot of men, they kind of skip over these kind of things, you know, they'll talk about, you know, do things, uh, a lot of rebuke, which is nothing wrong with that again, but, you know, the scriptures has, there are many uh, notes in the scriptures. There are many notes in the scriptures, you know, you have to be able to analyze all of the aspects that the Lord created, okay, the history, um, the law, prophecy, Okay, all these different things. Um, this is, um, you can't just do videos on women and then say, you know, you have, a, you know, I have 100% truth, but you only, you know, do videos on women, you know, for clicks and for likes. All right, this, hey, the woman is a, is, a, is a small thing, man. We get that power, when shit hits the fan, they're going to get an order quick. All right, that's why seven women are going to grab hold of one man. All right. And that's a, that's a, you know what I'm saying? That is in the scriptures. We address that time to time, but that's really a small subject. All right. But back to this. That's why the scriptures say, uh, you know, knowing that you would judge the world, you're going to judge angels. You're going to judge the world. You know, be not ignorant of any small matter. So those small matters, you know, small details and stuff. That stuff matters as well. All right. Um, yeah, but then just to support what I'm saying, First Chronicles 3 and 10, you can see the sons of Solomon. And Solomon's son was Rehoboam, excuse me, verse 9, the sons of David. All right, these were all the sons of David besides the sons of the concubine. <laughs> verse 5, so like, and these born unto him in Jerusalem, Shemaiah and Shobab and Nathan and Solomon, right? So these are two different men, Nathan and Solomon. Okay, Nathan and Solomon. Two completely different men, two completely different lineages. And uh, uh, those two, uh, the two parents still came out of the, the, the waters of Judah. All right, so that actually proves the point that he was of the line of Judah. All right, when this person is actually also saying that... Um, you know, he was uh, born of uh, 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 the Immaculate Conception, basically. All right, he's the, he's the, which he is the son of God, okay? He's the son of God. He's the son of man, all right? But he had a lineage. He was born of the seed of men, 
Okay, the root of Jesse. The lion of Judah. There's a reason why he's attached to that tribe. All right. And this actually proves because, again, he's of the kings of Judah. Matthew 1 being of his father's lineage. And then Luke 3 being of his mother's lineage. All right. Then it actually tells you, um, uh, verse 5, it says, Then Solomon 4 of Bathsheba, the daughter of Emmanuel. Okay, Bathsheba, Bathsheba. So it actually does put women's names in here from time to time. Okay, in verse 9, it says what? These were all the sons of David beside the king, the sons of the concubines, and Tamar, their sister. All right? So, so like I said, women were actually mentioned in here. All right, this is Luke 1, because it actually tells you that uh, John's mother, Okay, John the Baptist and Yahweh's mother, they were cousins. It says, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this was the sixth month with her who was called barren. And this is the angel talking to Mary. All right, so they both conceived seed, her and her cousin Elizabeth, which Elizabeth was older, it tells you. And then Mary, we know, was probably uh, very young. You know, a lot of uh, authors will say she's 14. She was 15 at the time. And it tells you their cousins now. It tells you um, that Elizabeth was of the daughters of Aaron. What's that? Yeah, verse uh, 5 Luke 1 and 5, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. Okay, and her name was Elizabeth. So she was a, Elizabeth was a Levite. Mary was a Judite. Okay, they were cousins. So maybe, you know, um, however they were cousins, you know, through whoever's father, whoever's mother, however it was. All right, however it was, somebody's father or somebody's mother was Judah, and then somebody's father was Judah. But we know that Mary's father had to be Judah. And then um, Elizabeth's father had to be, uh, she, she's one of the daughters of Aaron, so her father had to be Levi. Okay, so maybe um, their cousins through their mother. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't it doesn't specify. Right? But it tells you again that they were they were cousins. Alright, and that's the scriptures, man. All of our people are uh are, are uh, related in some way, shape, or fashion, but the scriptures doesn't tell you uh with certain relatives that you can't deal with. Alright. You know, your second cousin or you know, whatever. I'm not I'm not even gonna go into that. Because that's something that's going to manifest, uh, you know, in the future. And that's something we did in the past. And uh, a lot of people aren't ready for that, you know. But, um, yeah, the, amongst the family, because at the end of the day, once again, all of our uh, forefathers are all the same. You know, Judah, you know, Ephraim, Manasseh. So within that line, if you have people who are married and having children, that would mean in some way, shape, or form that they're relatives. All right, we just showed you that with Joseph and Mary. They both go back to Judah. They both go back to uh, Jesse and then through David. But then the sons of David, their lineage is different. All right, so in a way that they're distant cousins, the scripture shows you that. So Lord willing, this is edifying. I just wanted to bring clarity to the topic. Shalom.